Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum and a very good day to all of you, my dear students. I hope that you are doing well. If I talk about what we have just covered in the previous lecture and the one before it, we are trying to focus more on the specific form of writing which is email. The electronic version of a mail and the manner in which it has been discussed. We have tried to give you an introduction, an overview, its purpose, advantages, talking about its format, then its detailed structure, how it begins, how it ends, and then we talked about the email etiquettes, the do's and don'ts which are required to be there in mind while writing an email. Once you know them, you can apply them and at the end of those lecture we talked about vocabulary and some useful expressions which can help you to write your email effectively but we can of course never ignore the significance of the mail itself yes i am referring to the latter whose electronic version we have just considered and which we have studied in the previous lecture and that is going to be our focus in our today's lecture. We'll be talking about letter writing. Why? Because if we just look back in time, it's this form of writing that we have come across throughout our different grades, different level and classes of education. I even remember as well to get this question on write a letter to your friend, write a letter to your family, or anyone but we have been writing we have been practicing we have been going through this exercise of letter writing at that time of course you consider it this is the format and that's how it is supposed to be written because that's the way it has been provided within the book that's the way it has been taught but now is the age and now is the time to realize its significance and to develop those expertise, those tools and skills through which you can simply justify and determine which form of letter to use and in what form, in what way, in what manner. Everything has to be considered and for that our today's lecture is going to give you the basic concept of letter writing. So if I talk about introducing you to this form of writing we can consider it to be a communication with people at distance it's a mode of writing it's a mode of communication through which you are interacting with people at distance of course you can find the analogies with some other form of writing but once we start looking into the details you'll start realizing this form of writing has its own significance and Due to the same reason, it's in use within different professional environment and organizations. In addition to communication taking place at distance, you can say it's like a matter of common concern. You have a topic of discussion and it becomes a matter of common concern. You have a common issue to highlight and common issue for discussion and this becomes the mode through which you are carrying out the interaction to resolve be it a query some confusion or some subject matter which is being discussed and that subject matter of course is a matter of common concern which is why you are writing a letter or receiving a letter from another person another thing regarding letter writing is that it's a mode of maintaining good relationship as well and you can place this point in a scenario in which you are writing to a friend or a scenario you are writing to a family member or even it could be a case in which you are writing to some officer or a colleague in a working organization. So to maintain some good relationship you write a letter. And another important point is that you keep a record of information and that written record if it's written of course can remain permanent this is the plus point and this is the advantage and this is also another important factor to be considered like a purpose of letter writing 
that to maintain a written record of the information which is being shared among two interlocutors or two persons who are interacting you use this form of writing known as a letter now with special reference to what basically can be the purpose what is a purpose why you are writing a letter what could be the basic reason well if we relate it with the points which we have just covered in our first or the previous slide you can say of course maintaining good relationship means you are trying to keep in touch with the people around you with whom you have to interact in addition to this of course letters are also used for your job applications you will see the manner once we start looking into the details of these forms of letter writing the different kinds of letter writing that this is also one of the purpose these purposes can be easily remembered once you go through the different slides and those slides are related to the different kinds of letter which we are going to study together so one of the form of letter writing is the one which you use to apply for a job you find some vacancy in a newspaper and you want to apply for that vacant position because you consider yourself worthy of that position and you simply want to apply one mode is you write a letter to that organization or to the HR department of that organization that you want to simply offer your services and to become part of that working organization that is something which you do in the form of an application and that application of course is like a letter then job application is not the end of course letter writing also involves getting some answers and you get the answers by first raising a question and that uh, question is basically raised in the form of a letter of inquiry or you want to inquire something that is also done through this form of letter that's of course a specific form of letter that we're going to study as well but that is also one of the purposes of writing a letter then of course whenever you write a letter it will always have some sort of information that will convert it of course into a letter so there needs to be an information there has to be some information and that is why it is one of the purposes of writing a letter you want to convey an information in addition to this letter is also a mode of writing which is used to raise complaints which is used to complain regarding something which has happened which was not supposed to happen you were expecting one thing you were getting another of course it becomes a source of confusion and you want to highlight it so the basic way through which you do it by highlighting the issue is you write a letter and that letter is basically used as a mode of complaining you want to complain regarding the matter which has happened to you so that is also one of the purposes and of course talking about the formal structuring the formal category of letter writing that is the ultimate mode of business communication all the transaction and transaction means communication or the interaction taking place which is done in a business scenario the written record of it is maintained and that is basically done through letter writing so this is also one of the purposes hope you're going to remember them if that becomes difficult of course try to relate these purposes by the different forms of letter writing that you need to know and that you will be studying of course you're expected to write them in future as well because such scenarios would be provided to you in the practical life in the practical environment so if we move ahead and talk about some of the advantages that you get as a result of writing a letter what's so special why this becomes the topic of importance why is it in the forefront why is it into the limelight why is this one better than the other forms of writing of course we shouldn't say that this form of writing is better than the other each form of writing has its own advantages i can say pros and cons but talking about the pros or the advantages the first one you can realize it and understand it very easily is nothing are needed to receive a letter you won't be required to get an internet connection first or a wi-fi or a dongle or any other means to receive it i'm not asking for electricity i'm not asking for internet 
All you need to have is yourself. If you are there to receive, the postman will come in and simply take your signature. You are here to receive the letter. You are here to get your post. You should be there, of course. If you are there, you receive the letter. That is one advantage. Moving ahead, as mentioned and discussed, it is like a permanent physical record of communication because one interaction taking place between two persons, if it's oral, how do you expect to maintain a written record of it? Even if I talk about this minutes of meeting, of course you can search it online as well to get a detail what are meeting minutes or minutes of meeting. They are also maintained to keep a written account of all the opinions, suggestions which are basically coming from the people who are participating in a meeting. Their opinions are kept in written form. And that document or that doc which is maintaining their opinion, their points, their reservation is basically minutes of meeting. So although there are modes, but these modes are there existing because of the fact that oral communication itself is not that permanent. And therefore you need something to make your communication more physical, more permanent. And for that purpose, your letter serves the job because it maintains this physical record of communication. Moving ahead, difficult to falsify because of an individual signature or the note paper of a workplace. Whenever you are there in a working organization because now everything has advanced but even back in time I would say within a working organization they always want to authenticate the information which is existing within an organization and the information which is being disseminated from an organization. For that purpose to authenticate they have this specific document in which there is a there is a logo there is a logo in the background of that document and that turns it into an official letter an authentic letter of course you call it as a letterhead as well so either they use this note paper or a letterhead of a workplace and to authenticate it to the next level, of course, you take the signature of the person who is, of course, writing something on that letterhead. So that person is claiming by doing this signature or by signing, writing the initials that this writing belongs to him or her and he, she owns it. That is the point. And th this is the advantage which you also get as a result of writing a letter that it becomes difficult to falsify because of the signature as well as the note paper of a workplace. This is also something which you can clearly realize and feel because we all have been going through this process of letter writing and especially the letter that you write with your own hand. Over here I have a left hand because I am a lefty. Of course you'll have this right hand. For writing a letter but the point here is that handwritten letter becomes more interactive and personal because even if I look at a document which is typed which is like a computer generated document a Microsoft Word document that seems of course official an official thing being used within a formal environment with formal writing of course is acceptable but in case of letter writing, of course, you have a category that we are going to study. You have informal mode of letter writing as well. When in that scenario, the one uh, letter which is written and of course which is handwritten is more interactive and more personal because the moment you see the writing, I'm sure we all know the way we write and we can even recognize one another through our handwriting because every one of us has a separate style, their idiosyncrasy I would say, of handwriting. They have their own style and even if I talk about it, people interpret it in different way as well that one who is writing straight is very straightforward, the one who is writing in a rightward direction wants to, you know, think about what's coming ahead the one who is writing a bit tilted towards the left means that he is more nostalgic or always thinking about the past so they try to interpret it in different ways writing is a reflection of you and even the one who are writing in small 
well they interpret it in different way they recommend that you should write with larger size you know your letters should be larger in size that means your thought is also very much clear i also do the exercise as well of making my writing clear because even i myself like it when i see the writing itself but the point here is that your hand writing makes the document that you are writing more personal and the other person takes it in a similar way as well that letter which is handwritten would be more personal the other person would recognize it yeah this is the person who has written the letter all by himself or herself so why not give it a reading so this is the advantage as well of a handwritten letter but that doesn't mean that you simply reject the significance or the use of a personal computer or a laptop or smartphone of course except the gadgets the technology should be there integrate both use them side by side and that will make you even a better person another advantage of letter writing is that you get the space of placing you know enclosure of small objects enclosure and of small objects if there is anything that you want to be there in addition to the letter or the document which has the letter uh, and you envelop it so within that envelope of course the things which you are placing becomes the enclosure and you can place them you can send them alongside the letter this is also one of the advantage that you can send anything alongside the letter itself as enclosure in case of your letter writing another advantage once again being free from this soft mode of communication soft copy or i would say the digital mode of communication the electronic mode the e mode of communication is that you don't have to worry about malicious softwares and viruses well you get free from it as well that is not the case that some virus is going to become part of that enveloped and sealed letter so this is also another plus point when we talk about letter writing and if you relate it with uh, this handwritten of course so this one these both are quite interrelated you can improve your writing skills if you are writing it this is the point i'm not saying handwriting i'm saying if even if you are typing this letter itself enhances your writing skills so these are some of the advantages which you get now we are looking at the types of letter writing if i refer back to the modes of letter writing which we have come across which we have been doing of course to some extent we can call it to be formal as well in certain situations but generally the kind of questions that we have been getting are most often the one that you have to write to a friend a family or some relative so they basically fall into the category of informal letter but in an official environment for which you know, that and uh, the situation in which you are about to enter in your upcoming future will ask you will demand this skill of formal letter writing and therefore will be studying them together side by side so you can see the similarities of course which would be there alongside some of the differences that you need to keep in mind as well talking about the informal mode of writing starting of course from the things which are more familiar to you are known as the personal letters because you try to reflect yourself you try to be more conversational and personalized with your writing even it could be the handwriting of course you have a friendly style you want to develop this intimacy you want to develop friendship you want to strengthen your relationship be it a family member or a relative or a friend or a fellow but the point is you want to be friendly address to a family and friends and talking about the format it has the following sections you have the heading you have salutations you have a body and once you have written the body subscription and signature now what are these sections it's time to look into the details of these sections starting from the first one which is heading at the very beginning of this format of an informal letter you have a heading and in this heading this refers to the details of the sender's address of course sender's name would come full name alongside the address then you're going to place the date 
and keeping in mind that there shouldn't be any full stops. So this is also a point to remember. And then you place it in journal at the top right hand corner of the letter. This is like part of the format that you need to keep in mind that it has to be there at the top right corner of your document. If you're looking at me, I should say, this is the document. You have to write a letter from left to right, top right corner of the letter. Over here, this heading is going to come. You move ahead, you're going to move from heading towards salutation and within this salutation you basically are trying to greet the other person so you basically greet by addressing and using the word dear now the word dear is followed by the name of your friend or your fellow and right after it you are placing a comma this is not a comma you basically place such comma I wanted to draw a tick basically. Sometime I miss it. Okay, once you have salutated, after the salutation you get the body. And within this body, you start with an opening sentence. It could be of this form, just to guide you, to start your own practice. I'm writing to you after a long time. Lovely to hear from you. So, comma means it can be the informal tone could be in this way or if it's even more informal you can simply take a start in this form you have been writing you can have a good idea as well once you have opened the conversation within the body you come towards the main message brief messages of course within a conversational manner the point that you want to highlight or the point that you really want to make is afterwards after what opening sentence the one which has simply started the conversation main message complete you have communicated everything you want to close the conversation you, you provide a closing sentence you express regards and hopes of further communication to the your addressee so it could be please give my regards to the other person please give my regards to your uncle, please give my regards to your father, please give my regards to anyone to whom you want to give regards. I'm looking forward to hearing from you, of course, developing that link, instigating a response from the other person to come. That's how you structure your body of the informal letter. Once you have done this, then comes the stage of subscription. In subscription, you basically vary the structure depending upon the nature and the relationship which is there between you and your address, you being the addresser and the other person being the addressee. So the nature of the relationship and the extent that relationship is strong and maintained, you basically structure your communication and with special reference to subscription. Now let's have a look at what basically are the different forms of subscription. Your affectionate son, your affectionate daughter, or yours affectionately, slash, meaning another option is yours lovingly. Now these are the options for relationship. In case of your friends, you can say yours sincerely. And one point to be remembered over here is, of course this is for friends, this one is for family, the point here is yours is a possessive I'm talking about this word so there shouldn't be any apostrophe this comma that you place over here in journal we are like writing you are and then we place a, a comma over here and then this s so this comma is basically not allowed here because this is not a comma this is a space in which you basically have to indicate or you can write it as this book is yours and now in this expression the word yours is not in the form in which there has to be an apostrophe it's like a possessive case and you want to show that the possession belongs to you in a similar way you have to keep in mind that the yours being used over here is the same possessive one therefore there shouldn't be any comma why I adding this point is that I have seen in many letters students placing this comma 
due to certain habit they place it well this has to be avoided and that's why I did all the practice over here hopefully this line will also make you remember that this comma shouldn't be here just write it in a simpler way yours and then sincerely affectionately let's move ahead once you have made the subscription time is here to provide your own details the details of the sender over here of course you're going to place your signature your name your detail name of course if it's like a relationship in which you consider your single name or your first name will suffice of course you can write it but we being the teachers would recommend that you write a full name because that is how you write or you structure your informal letter as well so nothing wrong with using your full name either once you have provided the details right below the subscription there are certain informal mode of letter writing in which you write this letter I have seen it as well PS which refers to postscript earlier when I didn't know the meaning of PS I used to take it as personal secret but uh, that wasn't the case you know this is something which I tell you all the time that while teaching you and while learning things myself improving my knowledge to be able to guide you in a better way I learn new things too so this was new for me as well I liked it and that's why I wanted to make part of the lecture as well you basically write PS to add information when the writer has already signed off some additional information which has to be provided which has to be made part of your letter because it's important then after the script it is coming therefore you say postscript meanings after script and then you provide the information by writing PS this is also another mode of initiating a response you want the other party which is receiving the letter to provide you with a response then you write specially this abbreviation RSVP I uh, simply checked it I used to check it basically back in past to even remember what does it refer to it's, I guess the expression in Latin respondes and then some other words for these letters SVP uh, no need to remember it because in journal we write RSVP and its meaning should be known to you it's basically to extend an invitation which requires a response RSVP basically means please respond please reply this is the basic meaning so once you write it that means you are asking the other person to provide you with a response now the discussion of informal letter is complete and now you're in a position to move towards the formal mode of letter writing now let's have a look at how a formal letter is and how it is supposed to be written first the general introduction of course if we talk about formal letter it's also known as the official or the business letter because that's the mode of letter writing which is used in a working environment in a business setting in a business scenario then of course it's like an official letter for the individuals who are holding official position everything is happening in an official environment to maintain a written record of all the events all the activities and especially the communication this mode of letter writing is used and that's why it's called as the formal letter because it's used in an official scenario what are those scenarios of course they could be your institute the government departments even your own firm or business organization where you are working yourself you being among the administrators but the point here is that you use this letter writing and this form for communication among your colleagues as well as the subordinates. Another point which is important especially with reference to the formal letter is that how it is basically different from the informal letter writing. First, to understand this point, I should mention here that in case of your informal mode of letter writing, you have already seen the structure, you providing uh, the detail regarding yourself, of course, and then moving ahead with 
salutation then of course opening middle ending subscription signing off with of course signature and then RSVP and PS so you know the format but one thing which is added into all these points and all these section is that the receivers the person who is going to receive that person's address is also made part of the main document of the letter which is being written it's also included within the official letter tick basically so that becomes part of the written document as well this is basically the difference because back in that form basically once you have written the letter you fold it you're going to place it in an envelope you'll envelop it on the back side of that envelope at the top you're going to place this receiver's address at the top and on the left hand side at the bottom your own address would come that is basically the format or the mode of sending an informal letter when it's envelope so the, the receiver's address is basically found on an envelope that is the point which i'm making but in case of your formal letters to make things formal this thing is mandatory because of course uh, this is the document which is disseminated circulated among different departments of an office of an organization that doesn't mean that it will remain either closed or open the point here is that the paper itself is circulated it's not enveloped it's not sealed which means the address is not expected or supposed to be there on an envelope whereas on the contrary the address should be there in the document itself so that all the persons who are getting a copy of that letter should know who is sending and to whom the letter is being sent that's why the receiver's address is also made part of that letter and that's how this point becomes important and that's why I've, you know told you the whole story how it's different from the informal mode of letter writing now move ahead of course being used in a formal environment and we have been highlighting the environment the nature of that environment you having multiple tasks to perform doing many things at a time having short time for these things to be read so it has to be short it has to be direct in the business setting it has to be direct you know highlighting the main point and you will see in the format how you are highlighting the main point by organizing your information in a structured way dividing it into proper sections so that the reader will simply say okay it's about this fine there's something to be read and therefore I'm going to go into details you'll see this is basically the quality which makes it more appealing in such a business setting you providing a subject or a line of reference and that person to whom it is being addressed simply looking at the subject okay this is the one I have been looking for finally I got it okay let's give it a reading let's see what's there within the body so therefore the addition of this subject line is also another important component in addition to the receiver's address which is also made a part of a formal mode of letter writing so now you have this general introduction if you have to talk about formal letter what is it about how is it written how is it different from an informal mode of letter writing looking at the format and the structure how it is supposed to be written now remember the points which I have just mentioned which I have just discussed in detail now you're going to see some similarities and some differences you're going to have this heading in the very beginning in which of course you have the sender's complete address followed by the name so you have to of course provide your name your details name doesn't mean the name itself the title you consider it necessary provide your address so these things will become part of your heading once you have provided the heading you'll move ahead and come towards inside address this inside address refers to the point which I've just mentioned in the beginning detail of the person being addressed alongside name of the company and organization so now the person who is being addressed the person who is going to receive the letter will be the target will be the focus and 
his or her details should come right after the heading of course in the inside address once you have provided the inside address you'll move ahead towards salutation and greetings now these salutation and greetings of course vary depending upon the acquaintance you know the kind of relation which is there between the addresser and the addressee for example if the addressee is new to you now understand the situations you are not uh, aware of the other person you don't know its nature or her nature you are not even aware of the name so you don't know who is your basically addressee so in that case you would have seen certain letters even if I talk about the electronic version so you receive letters in this way you are being addressed dear sir slash ma'am or in case they are aware that we are talking to a male dear sir they are not aware of the name so they are going to simply say dear sir in case you are a girl or a lady dear ma'am so that is how they're going to show their courtesy their respect because they are not aware of the name in case someone knows you or you are knowing that someone that other person of course you're going to address them by their surname again the surname being used for providing respect for reflecting courtesy for example over here we have dear mr name for abdullah name even we can say dear miss minhas let's suppose the name of the lady is maria minhas dear mrs kashif for example the name is Saima kashif so therefore you have mrs kashif that is how you are addressing them by their names by their surnames because they are someone known to you you are addressing them on one end you are greeting them and of course you are giving them the courtesy which they deserve especially being the reader and the addressee of your communication once this salutation is complete now comes the situation of providing the subject subject once again a line of discrimination point of differentiation between an informal mode of writing and the formal mode of letter writing over here you have to provide a subject because this will be the focus of your reader they'll say okay what's to be seen here what does the writer have to offer so you have to introduce the topic of your letter and it has to be a very brief single sentence because the moment it will get lengthy it is not going to have the impact it should be very concise again applying the seas of conciseness clarity concreteness completeness everything should be there now apply just on a single subject all seven C's should be there that's how these can be applied that's how you're going to make your subject more effective remember the points in mind and then develop the subject once you have provided the subject then comes the stage of writing your body in a similar way as you write the body of an informal letter you'll have the introduction you after introducing the component come towards your main message and once the main message has been provided and communicated you move towards the conclusion summing it all up you come towards the conclusion and that is how the body becomes complete at the end you move towards the next step and which is basically your complementary closing or you call as subscription well it depends on the salutation once again directly relate your complimentary closing or i should call it as subscription with the kind of salutation which you or the kind of greeting which you have made at the beginning once again developing or keeping in mind the scenario which was there at the beginning someone who is known to you or someone who is totally unknown to me how am i going to address them how did i greet them in a similar way you have to close the communication or do the subscription in quote in case of an addressee not known to you new of course as dear sir dear ma'am you're going to say yours faithfully and moving ahead in case of an addressee known to you then yours sincerely 
So this is basically the general format. I'm talking about the conventions, the mode which is basically standardized and followed. This is this is the pattern. This is like the format which is used, especially in case of the addressee known and the addressee which is unknown. You can do the practice, you can find the similarities and differences yourself as well by looking into the details, of course. Of course, after this complimentary closing and the subscription, you now move ahead towards the stage of signature. And signature once again means not just doing the signature, of course, providing your details, the name, the title and the address, everything should be coming there. So of course it would be coming under the complimentary closing and right after it the sender's name, designation, name of the organization, working, everything. The details should be there so that further correspondence is possible. Once that is complete, you'll move towards the next stage which is enclosure. Things which will be provided in addition to that written document, of course, that formal letter. Everything should be there in the form of enclosure. All the things which you are providing, for example, if there is an additional document in addition to the letter which you have written, something supporting evidence which you are providing alongside that letter. So that would come by mentioning it first on letter ENCL, that's why I've written it over here. ENCL dot means you are enclosing something and that enclosure is indicated by this abbreviation and whatsoever is there should be mentioned. And then of course it should be placed beside or alongside that letter. Any document, anything which you want to disseminate or circulate alongside the letter would be your enclosure and it should come as well listed after the signature. So you have to provide it in the form of a list, all the supporting documents which are there, they will be provided after the signature. Carbon copy, another important component, just the way we have electronic version. You are well aware of the concept that I mentioned in case of our email. The same concept lies over here that all the people names of all the individual receiving a copy of that letter of course they'll be receiving it they should their and their names should be placed first of course it would be coming after the enclosure you're going to place this double c with a colon at the bottom of the letter and then you're going to provide the list of all the individuals to whom a copy of this letter should be provided their names should be there their names should be listed and of course they would be coming after the enclosure. So this is basically how you prepare a letter and then it comes to the end. Now over here you have a basic format of letter writing. The journal conventions are being provided to you over here. There are minor differences but still it has to be uh, a point which should be discussed over here. In journal, we basically have two types of format. We have a block format and we have a modified block format. We have just seen the formatting of how you basically structure your informal letter and of course the formal letter. But with special reference to I'm talking about the formal mode of letter writing. These are the formats which are basically practiced, which are basically applied, used, so in case of your block format, main point to remember here is that all elements are placed on the left margin. In your case, this is the left. So left hand margin, things are placed on the left hand side. The second format, like a modification of a block format, which is why being called as the modified block format, almost the same. Things which are different is the date and the closing which comes on the right hand side in your case over here this right left confusion can be removed by coming towards the details so if I talk about the block form and now you have a picture in front of you as well most common layout of a business letter because this is the layout which is generally used entire letter is placed on the left hand side it's placed left it's also justified 
you will have an idea of justification uh, in case of your MS Office Microsoft Word document where you have these keys at the top of making things in italic in bold on the right there is an icon or a key by clicking on it you justify your text it gets itself balanced everything is aligned around boundaries single line text is not tilted so it has to be justified another point is single spaced and there should be a difference of one at enter the line spacing should be single spaced you you click on this button on a keyboard one enter that means it is single spaced you press it twice that means now things would be double spaced so you basically have to click on enter once to make your lines single spaced that double clicking is only uh, allowed here in case of your paragraphs so in case of your paragraphs whenever you have to indicate that now from one paragraph you're moving towards the second paragraph then you're going to click on enter twice making it double spaced so this is basically the concept and the rules regulation and conventions of your block format one picture is also here to guide you if you simply divide it into section this is one section then you providing detail ending everything is if you can realize placed on the left hand side and this side is being kept a bit more empty this is like a format a good example here to make things more clear one thing which is like missing is at the top just to make it more apparent and visible for you uh, the sender's address basically comes at the top but these are the things which are coming afterwards so you can see date on the left hand side then the address uh, your uh, details are also coming over here the person who are interacting their details are here the addressees details and then moving ahead uh, this is basically the beginning you are greeting salutation is here then you are basically coming up with a body of the letter introducing things coming up with main message then concluding things then sincerely means of course subscription coming towards the end complimentary closing over here your name is here over here you can do some sort of signature point here is that this is how things are aligned on the left hand side and this is basically known as the sample of a block format letter to have a good idea if we look at the modified block format you're going to see the differences almost the same as block format why almost the only differences or the exceptions are your closing and complementary closing of course and the date is placed on the right hand side and that is how you see this is the area where you are providing the details of date and the specific date on which things are happening being communicated and the closing is also there on the right hand side the rest of it is once again on the left hand side so that is how you're getting an idea the example is going to clarify things even better once again date is there on the right hand side then details of the addressee left your uh, salutation left the body is also on the left and once again you are shifting here towards closing things you are coming towards right and then your name and signature once again would come over here point here is that this is how you aligned your text your letter either into a block format or a modified block format these are the things to remember hopefully you can apply them you'll keep them in mind and you'll probably be getting the instructions either from your working organization or in case your academic environment from your teachers from your evaluators the next step the next phase of our lecture with special reference to letter writing is the guidelines which are to be kept in mind some of the important points which should be remembered which would help you to write an effective letter a letter which is going to make a difference 
How you can make it effective is by providing factual information. I don't think it will be that difficult for you to understand what factual information is because we have been talking about it. We know related to facts and figures and what do you get as a result of these facts and figures? Impartial communication in which the element of subjectivity is minimized, brought to zero or minimum. But the point here is your letter is more effective, it's more impartial. It's going to have a difference. Then, with reference to the seven C's, I would say, you have to state your message or messages with clarity. Clarity is just one C, but of course, it is going in line with all the other C's of communication as well. So, everything has to be covered alongside this clarity. Moving ahead, you have to avoid the use of slangs. Slangs meaning those words, of course, which can be abusive, which could be harsh, very strong in their tone and their impact on your readers. You have to avoid the use of slang as well, which is going to change the tone of your letter towards the negative side. So it has to be avoided as well. Moving ahead, you have to keep in mind to cross-check checking and cross-checking, proofreading and editing, of course, applying that third stage of the writing process in which you are revising, checking, changing, editing, just to remove all the errors which may have a negative impact over your readers. That is also something to be avoided, has to be minimized. And that is something which is going to remove all the grammatical errors from your writing. Being respectful by using a polite tone in your letter writing. I can say it's once again one C and that C is courtesy and that also takes me to another C of consideration. So consider your audience, their background knowledge, their understanding, their nature, their expectation. Based on that, develop a tone which is courteous you uh, basically respecting them and this respect is going to have a difference because you are being polite throughout your letter writing these are some of the guidelines that you need to remember as well now we come to the stage in which uh, we're going to look at the different forms of writing and those forms of writing a letter have their own separate objectives now just look back Think of the purposes which we have talked about and with reference to those purposes you'll be getting different forms of letter, different kinds of letter. We have the following uh, categories and kinds of letter. We start from the inquiry letter, we have the complaint letter used for making complaints of course. Uh, we have this category of cover letter. We have this category of writing a good news letter, of course indicating that you have a good news and the letter used for writing or providing a good news becomes a good news letter in case if it is communicating some bad news, of course it becomes a bad news letter. So starting from uh, the inquiry letter, a letter which is used for raising some sort of inquiry. This is how if you have to define it in just few words you can say it but looking into the detail talking about a structure with some examples. So a letter of inquiry basically asks someone for specific information. You want some, some, uh, some person to respond and provide some information that's why you're raising an inquiry. In certain cases, such as a request for promotional material, these are certain situations being provided to you in which uh, this response or the nature of this response can vary and you have to structure your inquiry letter accordingly. So talking about situation number one, in which uh, making a, a request for promotional material, the recipient will have a clear interest in responding to your letter because it's more or less related to a promotional material promotional material something which is going to provide advantage in the long run so response will become quick but in other cases such as request for some specific information which requires some sort of detailed analysis or study 
So study and detail analysis is something which can cause a bit of boredom and of course will be a bit time consuming as a result of which the other person may ask for some time and therefore of course you can infer and deduce that the other person will be a bit uh, hesitant to provide you an immediate response. They are going to say okay we will provide a response but after some time. So if we look at the text itself the recipient uh, starting from the very beginning in other cases such as a request for specific information on a product you are being asked for providing some specific information of a product so of course you have to research over it then you may or may not be as motivated to respond uh, compared with the situation in which it was a promotional material so you won't be that quick in responding because this one is demanding detailed study so situation varies and therefore structure of your letter would also vary Consequently, try to make your tone of the letter more friendly and make it easy for the recipient to identify and provide the information you need. So keeping things friendly, keeping things simple and making it easy for the other person to identify and provide the information they require. So this is the point which has to be kept in mind especially while writing a letter of inquiry looking at things from a broader spectrum your letter of inquiry would ask someone for specific information and therefore you need to clarify your intent what is the intention of writing this letter at the very introduction you have to provide this thing once you have provided another thing to consider is you have to specify your needs within the discussion what basically is required you are inquiring for something you provide it in discussion and you another thing which you need to keep in mind is that the conclusion should be very precise because you have already asked demanded something and you have discussed and talked about it in your discussion section the main body and the central portion of that body Therefore, it has to be concluded precisely. The things, of course, which you have to highlight in discussion should be very clear. And that's why I've written them in the form of bullets, degree requirements, equipment cost, performance records, or any other thing. It has to be specified, be it in a subject and, of course, coming in the body. But it has to be clear and concise and concrete. That is the point which I am making. Over here we have a sample for you if you look into it of course once again address coming at the top and then you are highlighting the details of the person who is basically the addressee over here then you are coming up with salutation over here dear Dr. Gomez and the full name of course is here I'm writing you in hopes of finding out more about this is basically the blood glucose monitoring system that is the subject and that is why it's being highlighted and that's why it's being referred to which a representative at life scan inform me that your clinic is currently using now you're going to make the inquiry originally I saw life scan advertisement of this new device in January this this date and became very interested I wrote the company and got much useful information but was recommended to write several users and for a technical report that I am writing, I'm over here, I need some help with the following questions. So if you look over here, you have listed things very clearly what you actually require. That's how you basically cl clarify your needs in a specific manner. Now, one, two, three, you have made things very clearly. You are raising questions and of course you are inquiring for these, you're going to get a response provided you have listed them, you have provided them in a way the other person can understand your things very clearly. Life scan, and then you are summing it all up. Life scan representative indicated that your clinic is one of the leaders in the implementing of new technology for diabetes and therefore I'm eager to hear from you. Thank you for your time and I hope to hear from you soon. Again a thank you note and then closing remarks you are uh, providing the subscription then your own detail but the point here is 
that you have to clarify your needs your demands if these are listed properly you will not have any issue of miscommunication or any sort of confusion so that is how you basically structure especially your letter of inquiry hopefully the example was comprehensible and made the difference with this I would like to conclude our today's lecture I'm going to discuss complaint letter alongside the cover letter the good news letter the bad news letter in detail alongside some examples in the upcoming lecture till then take good care of yourself and I'll see you in the next lecture Assalamu alaikum and thank you.